Well, we've finally come to the end of my five at fives, at least, and I've thoroughly enjoyed this week. Once again, good evening, this Sunday evening. Um, it's been a wonderful, wonderful week of, of service and of being in the Holy Week, or not the Holy Week as it's called, the Nativity Week, the week of Jesus' birth. And we continue to celebrate as we move towards the end of the year and look forward to 2021, which I know for everybody can't come soon enough, especially for me, I have to say. So we have been looking this week at the doctrine of Christ, a very important doctrine throughout Christianity. And we went through the beginnings of looking at the theological importance of the conception, the importance of the incarnation, the made flesh. We then looked at his humanity. Um, Jesus' humanity is important because like us, he, had, he was everything, but he was without sin, which changes the nature of the humanity, admittedly, but in an important way. That important way was because of the three offices that he then undertook in his ministry or in the reason why he is here. And you have the office of the prophet, the word, the truth. You have the office of priest, the mediator that stands before God. And you have the office of king, the authority, the final authority that we will rule, that will rule over us for the rest of eternity. Not through anything other than with love and compassion and, and grace that we have we so do not deserve but are given and then and then now we're going to finally come to one of the most important aspects of really understanding the doctrine of Christ and that is why did God become man and this in Latin is cur deus homo and asked by a monk in the 14th century or the 11th century sorry a monk in the 11th century began to really look at this and put it together as to why God became man the great passage of scripture that really pull, pulls this out is once again Hebrews. The author of Hebrews really structures this necessity that God must become man. God leaves the heavenly realm, that God comes and, and becomes man incarnate, made flesh for a specific reason. And this, this particular piece of scripture is Hebrews 2, chapter 2, verses 5 through 18. I'm not going to read all of them, but I want you to see some significant pieces within that scripture so that we really understand why God became man. And we're going to read 4, 14 to 18, but I want us to look at, you know, there are many reasons why. From verse 5 through verse 9, you have that is actual, Jesus becomes man in order to fulfill God's ultimate intention for humanity, that this redemptive process step is needed, this, this justification that we will stand sanctified, justified in front of God, one of the key pieces. And then really through 10 and 13 within this scripture, you get that it's for glory, it's for God's glory and for us to be in that glory, that we now can be glorified, that we can follow in the glorification steps that Jesus takes as part of his sacrifice. So let's pick up though in, in verse 14. And verse 14 in Hebrews chapter 2, since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. I, 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 it's a beautiful piece of scripture, and that long word propitiation is a word that means that God's wrath is fulfilled. And in this you have... To destroy the power of Satan is a really important key. It goes all the way back to that original promise that God's, God makes as he condemns the, sa the, the snake, the woman, Adam and the earth. But he makes that real prophetic promise that ultimately there will be power over death and there will be power over Satan, which is what you see here through, the re through God becoming man. And then finally, in 1718, you have in order to be, become a merciful and faithful high priest. And we talked about the priesthood on Christmas Day. We talked about Jesus, Jesus being the high priest on Christmas Day. But, but that really comes back to why he had to be here. You know, the, the tribe of Levi could only perform something that was temporary. The high priest could only perform something that was temporary. Jesus performs 
a final and complete act as our faithful high priest, as he stands as a man like you, as a man like me, man being the Adam in Hebrew being all of mankind, as he stands as all of mankind before God having come and been like you and and me and understanding what it means to be tempted and understanding what it means to suffer and understanding what it means to be glorified and understanding what it means to be tormented, then as that perfect high priest, that perfect final word, that perfect final truth and that perfect royal king and servant, we get to really understand what it means because of our salvation. So I'm at the end of our Doctrine of Christ, a huge doctrine that you should really enjoy researching and reading. I hope this is just giving you some basic insights into into its important nature, especially around the birth of Jesus Christ. I love you all. I pray for you all. I hope you've enjoyed these five fives. I look forward to the next time we do it, where we'll look at some other aspect of scripture and some other aspect of doctrines. Uh, Enjoy the week ahead as we look forward to the new year. Bye.